Hi, and welcome to Weather 101. Today we're going to be talking about tornadoes, how they form, and where do they most likely occur, and the different type of tornadoes, and the strength of tornadoes that we see. Tornadoes are formed by supercell thunderstorms, mesoscale supercell thunderstorms in the atmosphere. Uh, these thunderstorms are capable of producing tornadoes or several tornadoes over the course of uh, several hundred miles and what's called known as an outbreak that you get frequently in central and southern U.S. or in Oklahoma, Texas, the Panhandle, and as far south as Alabama and Florida. Uh, tornadoes uh, form, uh, tornado genesis forms with a rear flank downdraft, which is a violently column uh, of, of, of downdraft of air uh, makes contact with the ground and the tornado is said to have touched down uh, officially making the debris uh, making contact with the ground <coughs> Excuse me. tornadoes are classified kind of like in the same way of hurricanes in terms of a scale of one to five with five being the most severe and one being the less severe um, a guy named Dr. Ted Fujita, Fujita, a Japanese meteorologist and scholar, uh, came up with a brilliant system uh, called the Enhanced Fujita, Fujita Scale uh, to measure the tornado uh, wind speeds and depths. Uh, one thing, the difference between the hurricane and tornado scale is that tornado scale is more compacted in terms of it's more looking at the damage of a tornado and the damage path of a tornado and the winds are more compacted and definitely way more stronger than the hurricane's winds uh, which tend to top out uh, between 160 and sometimes it gets up to 180 and 200 but tornado winds can easily exceed 180, 200, 250 miles an hour easily on the scale. And so, a tornado that forms over uh, land is called a tornado or a land spout. But of course, you have a what tornado that forms over water, which is called a water spout. And water spouts uh, generally form independent from a little small thunderstorm, independent, and they generally are less powerful than tornadoes, only averaging about 50 to 60 miles an hour, sometimes getting up to about 80 miles an hour. Um, in strength, but there's still nothing to be played with, and so there's a small craft warning that issues out just in case boulders and anybody like that gets in in the way. But the first tornadoes, tornadoes rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. They rotate clockwise, of course, in the southern hemisphere, and this is due to the Coriolis effect. Very rarely you will see a tornado. There have been a few noted in Canada and Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and other places that rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere, but it's very rare. Less than 2% of tornadoes do that, exhibit that characteristic. Uh, tornadoes, now different between a tornado watch and warning. Okay, a tornado warning means that a tornado has been indicated by radar or on by trained storm spotters on the ground and one is in your area and you should take cover in your basement or in a bathroom, a sturdy structure immediately. A tornado watch just means that tornado conditions are possible in the next 24 to 36 hours given what the radar presentation is looking at some strong or severe storm. Uh, you can have there's several different structures of tornadoes that I want you to look up and check out as well. There's what's called a wedge tornado, which is like a large triangle, inverted triangle type of tornado where the base is wide. Here in this picture, we're looking at a kind of like a rope tornado. This one might be an F2, an EF2, F, EF3 on the scale of 1 to 5. Um, and one of the interesting things to note about tornadoes is that not only is the tornado itself rotating counterclockwise but the whole supercell cloud is rotating counterclockwise as well and so when you hear on tv and they're saying they're seeing some rotation they're mentioning the whole they're, meant, they're meaning to say the whole cell the whole cloud is rotating and then once the tornado drops down and forms out of that cloud it's rotating as well so both the tornado and the cloud are rotating counterclockwise simultaneously and moving at a very fast speed, sometimes up with a 50 to 60 miles an hour. Also, you can get what's called a multi-vortice tornado, which basically means that there's a lot of 
tornadoes rotating around the parent tornado that you see here. For example, you would have one or two tornadoes rotating around the side. Sometimes they join together and form one big tornado. Other times, they just spin around the parent tornado. And that gives you some, a very good indicator of the intensity of that tornado. Tornado genesis or tornado formation is still a science. There's still people, are meteorologists and teachers are still trying to understand how is it the tornado form. It's not really known. Uh, we know that the changing of winds at different heights of the atmosphere creates that. They come together and they create that spin and it drops down. But it's not known uh, the inside of the tornado, all the intricacies. But um, it is known that it's deep low pressure system and a supercell is needed for a tornado to form. And so for more information, you want to go to NOAA.gov, uh, their website, to check out the tornadoes. And you also want to look at the big tornado events. That's the Joplin tornado event we had a few years ago and the tornado outbreak we've had in the past year in 2010, back in 2010. So you want to check those out and it'll give you more details. Thank you very much. And look at the resources as well. And thank you for joining me on this look at tornadoes. And we'll see you soon. I'm Tony signing off.